Lords and ladies, welcome back to my street five years later with your host, Jacob Butter. Well met, lords and ladies. I don't know why I don't normally say that at the beginning of these, but I'm saying it now because I don't really have too much of an intro for this one, other than the fact, I guess, that uh, as, as I was installing this, this particular video on, on Restream, it came up as not Confession of the Spider Prince D and D Part Three. It came up as Confessions from the Spider Prince D Ampazand Amp Semicolon D Part Three. Don't know why that happened, but we're not here to dissect that. We're here to dissect uh, the content of Afmal and within the setting of D and D itself. We once again are joined by the resident D and D expert and. Uh, and uh, creator of Rip in the Dark, BB. I'm an expert, but I mean, I've played it a couple times. Uh, I, okay. I do appreciate it, though. I, w I will say, I don't know. That just sounds like YouTube's AI being funky, because I know they've been playing around with AI lately. I don't think it's that, considering the, the thing that, you know, YouTube doesn't exactly support uh, downloads of videos, so I don't imagine they have an AI. Oh, oh, whenever you downloaded that. it. Sorry, I thought you meant like the stream title. We're not even on YouTube right now, so that wouldn't apply. All right. Um, oh, so that's we right. also we have. I forget these don't go on there because they they gave you the thing. They gave that's me the right. thing. Yes, yes, indeed. Why? Indeed. Actually, the main thing I was gonna ask though, why we've been. Well, you've been doing these these Afmau, you know, Meister reviews for a while. Why? I have, yes. Since my street itself turned five. Yeah. yeah. Why exactly did you never get an intro for this like you did for, for Gotcha reviews? Oh, well, actually, what I used to do, I think I think the Gotcha review intro was actually something that, um, that Quadzi decided to do out of the blue as like as like a as like a support thing i think it was actually supposed to be like a channel intro at the start but i realized that my channel wasn't focused enough to warrant an intro that would encapsulate everything so i said okay just do a gotcha review and that'd be fun and then it eventually got revamped by william um yeah and the reason i haven't gotten into for this one is because actually when i used to use the soundboard i had like the music that would play at the top of the card and that was considered to be the intro what I should have done all this time is actually make is actually make a the a jingle for the retcon song. I've probably seen that for like three years and just never did it. So that gets priority. But oh well. Speaking of priority, I have other stuff I need to actually sort out because I was going to introduce another person for this stream, another person who's played D and D a couple of times and a participant in Rip in the Dark. It's Emily. Hi. Not it's Emily. That's a different person, but is Emily who is here right now? <laughs> Can confirm I'm not it's Emily. <laughs> okay. It, it's the Emily Chan, have... yeah. yeah, it's Emily Chan. Oh my goodness. I mean that that's that's a fusion if I've ever heard of one. Okay. Didn't uh, go see... and do that fusion at one point. I'm pretty I sure don't that know. was <laughs> Ghost in the chat, I guess I guess. Not not ghosty, confirm. not ghosty. I'm talking about the other the other ghost, the one ghost kitty. Oh right. Well, Oh no! So Ghost Kitty actually did do like a child of Shorty and Emily, but I don't think that was a fusion called its Emily Chan. No, I think the name's like Eve or something. What? Hang on, let me check in my in my. Joke. Why yeah. that name? Because that... Eve. I don't e know. Where's Adam? Yeah, well, that was th th there. Oh, there Eva. was. Okay. So where's Wally? Haha. -ha. Anyway, uh, so we have we also got Maya in the chat right now who recognized my the thing mention because I have been I was talking a lot about Cora yesterday, so I'm assuming that's why on high alert. But oh well. Okay, so everyone's been introduced. There's two more people watching this right now, but they haven't said anything, so I don't know who they are. But hello to them as well. All right, time to begin. We we're going to wrap up the short the the side stories to my knowledge. And so next time will be season six once again. But for now, we have some confessions from a certain spider prince who has a lot to answer for, apparently. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing confessions. But I forgot what that was about, so we'll see. Without further ado, on with the review. The elf, Afmao, 
having fought her way through the nether forest. And also upgraded her weapon, no longer using a frame pan. Okay. After getting separated from her newfound friends, now approaches the mysterious township. I've stumbled upon a mysterious township. What will the brave <laughs> warrior of Okay, I always love when 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 people do that. Was like the narrator says a thing and then the character immediately says the exact same thing. But like in played off as a joke, or like like what Peppa Pig does. That's just annoying. No. <laughs> it's gotta be it's gotta be done like this. There was like a very specific, like, try not to laugh sort of thing. You know what's they're like doing on Smosh Pit where there's like a try not to laugh uh, thing with like trying to like not spit out water? We did that one time in a theater group once. I remember that particularly there was this script that we had that we had to make it as funny as possible. There was once a lonely prince who was very lonely that the prince comes along stage and goes, I am lonely. <laughs> and that was it. Everyone lost it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Of <laughs> light, I found. White mage do now. She'll do exactly what a noble white mage would offer to it. Flirt with the entire town and all the survivors. The town possibly in need of some monster hunting assistance. I roll the flirt with the locals. <laughs> that can't be your solution to every problem you stumble across. I was kidding! What do you mean? <laughs> ah. I swear I didn't remember this. Crossing this world! <laughs> Why not? This is the problem. Athmau's humor has dictated my own for the past like eight years, and that's why all I know is this now. I'm going to get all the NPCs to love me. <sighs> Roll. You succeed. <laughs> There's another guy's like, Well, hello, handsome. My leg. But no, of course, it's gonna fail. Well, hello there, simple townsfolk. I seem to be a little lost. Think you can give me directions to your heart? Please help us, the monster has devastated our land. <laughs> it fails. On of course all it of does. Them? Yes. That's like three people. Oh, wait, no, it's more than them. Okay, never mind. All right, sign, fine. Okay. Oh, sweet Irene. Oh, wait. wait, is that the NPC Gara from the first episode? Like the one who's the one whose baby Afmal saved before? I'm pretty sure it was. Hey, wait! It looks like there's one NPC with such low intelligence that it actually worked. I mean, such I'm all just low standards. Okay, not that NPC, Garth. I meant like the other one who's like holding, who's like being obscured by Afmal's head right now. Afmal is not a bard. <laughs> she is a white mage, and that might be why this is not working so well in her favor. I, I don't, you know, I don't blame you for thinking, you know, she's a bard, since a bard is an actual class. <laughs> I mean, white mage should be a class, I can imagine. There's other magic classes, though. It's, 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 it's a homebrew, it's okay. Allow me, me. Yes, thank you! I'm noticing that he is partially, is like, blind in one eye. Is that supposed to be like, oh, that's what I uh, can't really properly make out the image or something? I don't know. It's a reference to Zane. Oh, okay. NPC Garth was. Wait, hold on. If that's the same NPC Garth as the first episode, that means the, MP... the other NPC Garth, number one, is about NPC Garth number two. They lost the baby in the previous episode, but that's now. But that, that but, but NPC Garth number two doesn't know that. And they uh, the doesn't recognize Afmal hasn't been informed of that by his wife. And so decide to flirt with her instead. Wow, this is going to be a, a, a huge drama. Okay. And yes, chaotic flirty is the bard stereotype. I, I, I have been made aware of this. <laughs> oh, but what's this? The nobleman's wife. And... Okay, that was like a very smooth, like dragging of. Uh, that's that's not like that. It means with your flirtation. <laughs> of course, he's married. Flirtation. So what happens now? Okay, yeah, you might- I guess you have to have pretty low intelligence to be married and also, you know, fall for someone else's flirting. Want to run. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry! I thought you think I was cute! I mean, I think I'm pretty cute, but I'm sorry I didn't mean to wrestle this bad! <laughs> At the end of the street are a group of bandits! I flirt with the bandits! <laughs> You're going to die, woman! Just do it! So... And it works. Do you come here often? 
<laughs> yeah, do you come up and answer me now? Like now? No, 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 the whole package equals one item. Pizza's here! Good friends! Sit down and assist immediately! <laughs> and yes, her part needs to save her. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and yes, if she keeps wanting natural ones, you know, maybe... I wouldn't be surprised if Gareth just used, like, weighted die or something like that. <laughs> Did we miss anything while we were gone? Well, Akbar has managed to anger an entire town, plus a couple of violent bandits with her terrible human connection stats. You want to jump in? Oh, so she had bad stats to begin with. That's not going to make things better. Did she make her own character for this? <sighs> Didn't think that one through. Oh! What? <laughs> what do you mean you... Okay, that's not... I mean, oh, it doesn't come right. down to thought. You roll, you roll your stats. Didn't we like create a? Did we like have to decide our stats for something before we did our D and D demo? No, we rolled. We had a channel that we that we rolled with a bot. I'm pretty sure we made an entire spreadsheet you know, to fill in a bunch of numbers for it. Yeah, which were all rolled. How did we roll? Th we didn't. We didn't roll this at all. I I I inputted those because they gave us like a max value. And I and, and yeah, no, to distribute we, them. We chose them. I didn't, I didn't roll for anything. No, we, we you were supposed to. We all rolled our stats. Uh, well, I did not. That was not part of what happened. Yeah, no, that's that's what I just I just carefully I just carefully distributed them. Anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so um, so <laughs> I was gonna say this. Yeah, Maya, you're right. Pizza count. I've got to do that. Pizza counts. It's finally back after such a long time. Is 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 her charism just in the garbage? I I I imagine it is. I mean, it's not a bard. <laughs> Can I be let in for a sec? All right. It was gonna be. It was gonna be long this before. This is not in this episode. I don't think. What? That's not the only reason Ghosty joins. Oh my goodness! No. My wants to join this. <laughs> this is like a. It's a direct like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> A direct violation of the of the of the two person only rule. <laughs> I you know rules are made to be broken. I guess I tend to ah uh, right. You know you know what the party is the party is here and therefore more people join. And I also haven't spoken to Maya in person in like ages. I'm gonna bend the rules this time. All right. I also play D and D. Yes, I, everyone here is more qualified than me. It's like the Yu-Gi-Oh thing all over again. <laughs> ah, D and D's pretty fun, though. I understand. That's why I like. I, I wanted to join that one time. We go do something with the Butter Bunch. I know. <laughs> mean, I follow Kawhi Chan into battle. Hmm. What? Are you gonna help out? Why else is he here for D&D Day if he's, if he's not going to help out? What kind of question well, I mean, is that? He, I mean, he could have just brought the pizza with them. I mean, he could have just wanted to hang out. He's not even carrying the pizza. <laughs> anyway, Neither whatever. Neither is Hawaii, Chan, so... Yeah, and she's going to join in the session. Exactly what I mean. Anyways, Ghost and Myra both here. Hi. Oh, hey. I just wanted to pop in quickly and say... You can roll for stats, as BB's saying, but there's also standard array and point by. I was also I, I did to forget about point my by. group. My group gave us like six numbers that we had to assign one to each. Like we got to pick basically our like ratings, but we could basically it was sacrifice. Yeah, all I, I, will all know, I, all I, I know is that we were given. I think the player's handbook makes a point to mention. I mean, I did forget about point by. It does mention point by. Uh, but I think it also only mentions the rolling. I don't know that the standard stuff mentions the array. 
All I know is that we is that is that for that session that we did, we were all given a spreadsheet and a max number that the stats were going to all add up to, and we decided what values we gave to everything. Then that might have been standard array. I don't remember it quite like that. Well, well it were you given like eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen? Because I'm pretty oh, sure those were the numbers. Yes, Maya, I remember the exact numbers that I was given for every single stat. Thank you. Nah. I think you two have got this covered. Fine. Well, then I throw Kawhi Chan at the bandit. I mean, I guess, you know, emo knights canonically travel alone. We did establish that last time. What? Zane would pin me. Huh? Zane would pin me as the type. Uh... I think I know why Maya's laughing at the phrase Zane would pin me in isolation. <laughs> Just, you know, since we've got the face cam going, just gonna make sure. But I know, I'm just gonna say, uh, Zane seems like the type to go for, you know, uh, the edgiest class. He seems like he would be the stereotypical edgy rogue. No, no, do you not remember what happened last time? He was so lazy that he made Afnal make his character, and so Afnal made him an emo knight from the town of Poopsville. And by that, I'm guessing you did not remember that. Okay, fantastic. An, an emo night. Once again, yeah, I it's, it's weird, man. Homebrew is fine, but it is just a bit odd that you would have a D&D, like, tiny little mini arc, and then just it, no one except for, I think, Kawaii Chan is an actual class in, like, the base game. I think, I, I try to remember what Aaron was, because, because, uh, that was, because that was, uh, I think Aaron was just, like, a standard warrior or something. I don't know if he was... I don't know. Don't remember. Back away from her bandits. So hold on. So one. So so Kawaii Chan is the equivalent now of a sack of flour, apparently. Yeah, you big bullies. <laughs> wow, she's perfectly fine, apparently, just uninjured. Okay. <laughs> nope. It's that man. What do you expect? Yeah, Travis will you... cross half the world, half the universe in the time. I mean, that is true. Travis did- I, I have famously brought up the example multiple times of Travis blowing up inside of a house, flying halfway across the world, and landing in a pit and being perfectly fine and not actually dead, like he thought he was, rightfully so, only to immediately then be punched off of, an, of a roof by Caitlyn in an act of attempted murder she has yet to answer for. You guys were? You know, a thank you or two would be nice. Thank you? <sighs> Come on. We gotta regroup and keep moving. What about Zane? He's probably made- Yeah, we got to regroup. Making the world a better place! <laughs> he's burning down towns, probably. <laughs> that or he's- Yes, yes! I expected I mean, him to- I expected him to be doing the actual smart thing of being in the village and gathering information on the quest, but no, he's just pointing his sword. Remember, in real life, Zane used to be, used to be incredibly power-hungry. And now he gets to fantasize about actually having power. Oh, good. Hmm. That makes the uh, Dungeons & Dragons What's a perfect game for Zane. But unfortunately, does, yeah. after hours, uh, poor charisma stats and chaotic, flirty attitude is dragging the kid, is dragging the camping down into the pits. There's always got to be but something. How are your charisma stats so low? I don't... I... I... <laughs> I, I, again, I think Gara just like you to use weighted dice or something. Ah, no! Or she just rolled. I don't like. Yes, she. Yes, she rolled it using Gara's weighted dice. You see what okay, I'm getting at even here? If she rolled it, <laughs> if her charisma stats were so bad, why in the world would she attempt? She probably chose the class first. I don't know. Like, also, I'm pretty sure she also, did. So yes. I'm just saying, you do not necessarily have to play a class just for the stats you know i'm yeah. just saying you could All you I'm... could do a, a class and then have the bad stuff and that could honestly just enhance the situation really all 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 i know is that all i know is that um this i i once wrote uh, a gacha movie script that didn't get made that was uh that was that was set in an rpg game where one of the where the character who i made the white mage was the was the annoying stick mm -hmm. in the mud who was always ma was making insults at his friends. So, I don't oh, know. Also, Is there a correlation? 
also the classes tend to have bonus uh, stuff on it. So if you want those like extra like one or two to, yeah, to the like, die roll. I was about to say, BB, depending on the white mage's uh, best key stats, Aphma might have chosen white mage and was like, yeah, I'm going to choose all the best stats for white mage. And she just put nothing into charisma. <laughs> Probably. Hey, come back here! He's like, oh uh, yeah, I am good at healing. I am intelligent and can talk to people. Wisdom, sure. Charisma, ah, uh, that probably doesn't matter. Negative one. Oh dear. Here he goes. Like when I was just about to start my doomsday monologue. Man, that guy. What to one person? Cutting yourself short there, Zane. Don't say that! Why would you point that out? Are you actually trying to get us kicked out of town? Again? Exactly! You can't if anything, I would have. I'm surprised Aphmau's terrible flirting didn't get them kicked out of town. They almost got hooked out of town. She's being chased by all the locals. There's no town left to get kicked out of. So tired of this! We're supposed to be the good guys! Says who? Says me! Hmm. Since when did I become a quote-unquote good guy? Vegeta 2023. Aaron Kuhn, what are you doing? Being chaotic good. Uh, okay. Huh? Wait, this is giving me flashbacks? Isn't this like the exact duel that broke out in Akon 2016? Yeah, this feels yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. At least not over Aphmau this time. <gasps> Although we could we, we could definitely we could definitely use some more people in this because that was the scene where Caitlyn kissed Travis for the first time, so <laughs> I remember it vividly, my I don't have to think about it. <laughs> Ooh, it says a violent beast is attacking traveling merchants in the woods. Sounds like a joke. My brain was my, my brain was still covered to what I said about Kate and Travis, and I heard traveling merchants for a second there. Not the same thing. <laughs> traveling merchants. What are they selling? Like fan fiction. <laughs> selling fan fiction. That's my kind of. I like to show. imagine in every in every town there's just a set of merchants, and I do mean to say a set of merchants. It's two merchants running the running a stand, and they all look vaguely like Travis and Caitlin. Fan fiction, got your fan fiction over here. I got traveling fan fiction. I've got Zane Chan, and I have Armel. <laughs> There's all like the only line I, you know. I, I the the Armel, the Armel, it doesn't need a merchant. Those are like taxed on the people. So the only merchant that, that I ever see outside up? of actual thing is the cabbage guy. Yeah, see, cause, cause, cause Armau is a necessity in every Aphmau world. I mean, it's more of an inevitability, it's... but yeah. I mean, is there Armau yeah. and Demon, Demon, Minor Devil? Demons? There's not yeah. Aaron and Aphmau. That doesn't count. They don't <laughs> exist in that part of the. <laughs> Neither of them exist, and admittedly, I haven't <laughs> seen MID in a while. But I don't know if she ever even hooked up with anyone. Also. The, the also, there is a chance that Minor Demons and My Street share of share a universe anyway, because they could be in a different part of the Earth. So, again, <laughs> they might still exist there. Yes, kind of sounds like their business, though. Yeah, we don't know. Aphmau's lawyer is vague and obtuse at best. Yeah, I, d I mean, my, I mean, My Street is basically Earth Prime. We all know this. I, there she oh, is. that's Garth. That's dress again. Okay, I stand corrected. That is a different dress for. So this is uh, oh, not the same NPC Garth. This is NPC Garth number three. <laughs> the the <laughs> scenario of, of MCD and Maestri is like pre-crisis DC, where you had like Earth Two as the Golden Age, and that was like the main comic Earth, and then the Silver Age rolled around and just promptly became the main thing and completely overthrew the old Golden Age comics of Earth Two. Yeah, like, I think I brought up uh, that Aphmau felt like pre-crisis in a live stream once. You probably did. And you also sent me an OSP video that explained pre-crisis to me, so I know what you were talking about. You <laughs> if you didn't like me BB, I got to Jacob first. 
<laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I love you too, buddy. You act like one witch. Hey, I'm allowed to act as I please. You're just a stupid NPC. <laughs> yeah, don't break the fourth wall. Second thoughts. Let's run. <laughs> Took slightly longer than normal, but uh, yeah, got you out of town again. Um, Kawaii-chan, you might not want to sit there with the sword pointing directly at your eye. No, th those metal shavings aren't going to go anywhere. Don't worry. As a manufacturing person, you know, as someone who's in there, I can guarantee you I have not had any metal shavings drop and go into my shoe. And I find out whenever I put it on, like, the following week, uh-oh, this stings a little bit. Like, I meant I... more. I meant more like I, I. I feel like this is probably the sound that it's making right now. It doesn't seem like it's shaving. It's more like a polish. But at the same time, one of his hands or both of them could slip or make like a wrong movement at the wrong time. That's more. I was more worried about like the actual full-on blade rather than like metal shavings. Like, Man, if that things... blade's slamming onto anyone and he's cleaning it, there's got to be loose metal shavings on there. Like. I'd also like to say that I'm more worried about him slipping and cutting off his own hand because that did happen to me in a campaign once. I see. <laughs> I'm just looking at this and getting intense. I I can't. W was that? Uh, hey, this didn't, this didn't happen during a LARPing session. Did you did you, you do that for the sake of funsies or did you just make a nat one? <laughs> And uh, no, I made a nat one. Okay, yeah. So, so, and that right. one of polishing your sword, your arm falls off. <laughs> Time shaking down the local townsfolk for money and not hey man, it, it, there's nothing seat. more magical in a in a D and D world than whatever the gods decide happens once you do a nat one. Whatever you think is impossible ceases to be impossible. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've seen some uh, some YouTube shorts of people like pretending to do it roll on that one like regular stuff in re in re in real life. So it's like nat roll to roll to go to bed. Nat one person like jumps <laughs> on the side and falls off the bed itself. You showed me that. <laughs> Misses the mattress like... entirely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I did. Safety of I, others. I remember my first nat one. We were fighting zombies oh, in no. a dungeon. That's promising And then my already. character slipped and fell into a spike trap somehow, even though it was very obvious it was there. You know, sometimes sometimes the ground is slippery, you know? Maybe then you could have a cool sword. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the guard just... <laughs> Did Garth have cardiac arrest at the table? <laughs> Guys, I think our I think our campaign's finished. <laughs> you will never escape my grasp, DM. DM just collapses. All right. Someone got eaten by a crab the first time. Yeah, there was um. Hold on, just there... like a regular sized crab or a giant crab. <laughs> Just, just a random crab. We were know. fighting an army of crabs. I see. I don't I know why, because the crabs were terrorizing goblins. That's fair enough. No, I. I don't know why. <laughs> I remember getting. I don't think it was in that one, but it was pretty low. And and I remember because I was new to this campaign. It had been going on for a while, but I had joined in a bit late. And on like the first session, I was there. So one of the party members died, and the. And so it was one of those moments where the DM decided rule of cool would be the superior thing here. So uh -huh. what they did was they had rolled and basically his like spirit had bonded to like a to like a doll, like a tiny little like like a like a, like a little doll, like rag doll or whatever. And yes. um and so he was like alive and stuff, and everyone could hear him, and I was like, wait. It'd be because I remember like the DM said something along the lines of like, and the reason you can hear him is because like, you know, you're close to him or whatever. Uh, and it occurred to me, I just joined. I'm not close. To, can I still hear him? What and I, so, I, I, and I mean, so the DM is like, you know what? That's a good question. I didn't think about that. Hey, roll so for the me. You got to pretend that you didn't hear the doll every single time it spoke. And, yeah. And so I made a, a low roll and she's like, yeah, so... 
whenever whenever he speaks, you don't you can't hear him at all. He's just making movements for you. And so sometimes we'd be in a dungeon and he would be giving commands and I see everyone walking away. And obviously me as a player, I can hear it. But I, I, in character, like, character, you're like, what's going on? Yeah, I'm like, hey, guys, where are we going? Wait, 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 wait what's going on? Hey, wait, guys, wait. And no one caught on to the fact that you couldn't hear. That's that's brilliant. I was going to say something similar happened in, um, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! where Tristan became a robot monkey for a bit. <laughs> well, there is a moment because 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 i was like wait i can't hear him so to me it's just a random doll who's doing stuff so i started trying to experiment with him like <laughs> the characters were like wait dude no wait he's possessed i'm like oh whoopsies i if the campaign kept going i actually plan on buying him a dollhouse and taxing him for it So I, I guess I guess the make doll making movements means it could offer you money. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I can I can see that. I can see that. Well, I, uh, I was a big old like I was a big old gender fluid. Uh, um, shoot, what's that? What's the dragon? Uh, uh dragonborn. Dragonborn. I uh, I was a well because I was a big old dragonborn. I could I could easily kill the thing if I wanted to. So I was like, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna have my character play around with that power a little bit. I'm like. So I, so I decided it'd be fun if I could just I give him a dollhouse. It never happened, unfortunately. We never got the chance. But it seemed like okay. a funny idea at the time. I, yeah, I, I don't know why you would randomly decide to kill a doll anyway, but fair enough. Well, because, I mean, you knew it was... I don't know, it's a random possessed doll. We had no... Really, we still don't know what the lengths of its possession actually was. I see. I was going to say, unless you're Sid from Boy Story, that shouldn't be your first reaction, but fair enough. <laughs> So, what was that about Lucinda not being here? For a second. Or I guess maybe it could be just Ubu this time and Lucinda's not here. I, I don't remember. Listen, I think it would be funny. Oh. I think it would be funny if I just so happened to join this stream and, <laughs> and then the wife appeared. No, th that is literally what, what, uh, what BB said when you said you were going to join. You know, that, that, you know, Lucinda's not here. So, like, that's not the only reason Ghosty has to be in this course. <laughs> And like, if behold, anything, Lucinda, Lucinda baked like, cookies, apparently, unless that was like all Ubu, in which case there'd be spider heads all over them. I don't want to eat those. Like, if anything, if Lucinda just so happened to randomly appear, that would be an excellent waifu bonus. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Garth would be like, and suddenly your party is revitalized by the queen of cookies <laughs> or something. Oh, dude, have you guys seen... All oh, your I energy think, has I, been replenished. I mean, I he think, did make quite an ogre when she stormed in one time, so not, not out of the realm's possibility. I think it's on Anna Pansu's channel. Have you seen the, uh, like, the, the waifu song that she did as, like, marketing for, uh... I think so? Maybe? She and a couple of her, uh, a couple of her other friends had made a, a collab song uh, for, like, their new, like, source book that they made. And it's basically just adding different like waifu archetypes to to D and D. Okay, I haven't seen this. <laughs> Wait, you mean the waifu handbook? I think so. I'm supporting the F of the waifu handbook on Kickstarter, but that's not important right now. <laughs> What's important is that the <laughs> is that the ultimate wife has delivered cookies, and of that course. is the only thing I'm focused on. Yeah. Yeah, you old cookie prank. We all we all know that one, don't we? Uh, it's, it's poison. It's famous. Oh, it's funny actually. So, so there was a there was an instance in our school. This isn't this isn't a very long story. There was an instance in the school where someone gave someone a cookie because I don't know they hated him or something, and they had, like laced it with LSD, and so they were tripping and they had to go to the hospital. Oh, I was gonna say this wasn't the this wasn't the first time we were seeing poison cookies in the My Street universe because episode two Kawaii Chan gives Reese the, you know the sleeping cookies. Yeah, no, so I guess some kids just not, gave yeah. someone some lace cookies. Right. Okay. I thought I'd have. Ooh. Hopefully, hopefully the kid like recovered and is okay. Right. I think so. Good. Bring us over some dessert for tonight. We're kind of like bros now. Thanks, little buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. You okay there, Kawaii Chan? Must resist urge to 
You know, if they called, if she has, if they called Kawhi, I see. Wait, hold on. Did they call Kawhi Chan episode five? I'm trying to remember now. If they called her for like help with getting rid of the spider from, you know, when when Ubu was terrorizing the nightclub. I don't, I don't remember, but that would have been a good tactic if they didn't. All right, we've been derailed. Back to the game. Okay. Hey, that was mine. There's like a plate of them. Why would she steal the only one that Aaron has taken? What's the point? First I don't off, know. Maybe I... she wants to eat what Aaron ate. That seems like something Asma would do. Or she just felt like being a troll. Probably. Again, she's bad at flirting, so possibly. I'm going That's to what D&D does to you. It makes you into gremlins. Right. It's a roll of perception to check. Actually, my that is exactly why I, the, the the one time I played D and D, I made sure that I was like the friendliest character in existence, just because I knew that everyone else was gonna amp up their own gremlinness, and I had to compensate for it. Like, meanwhile, I am the only one in my current party who is a uh, good character. Yeah, see, yeah. like you need you need one. You, like, there needs to be balance, of course. Yeah. Yeah, down in Rip in the Dark Town, uh, the cast just kind of. Even in Session Zero, they were they just ended up describing villain archetypes for what their characters wanted to be. At the end of the day, it was like, well, great, you're all terrible people. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. I would say we're all balanced people in my campaign, but also at the same time, um, we've destroyed a town, destroyed a fort, and somehow managed to set the desert on fire. You know, I was going to say that your definition of balance is probably going to be skewed anyway, but you proved it for me, so I don't have to. <laughs> hey guys, I think I see something over there. Just ignore it. I'm tired of people thinking I'm your assistant criminal for the day. <laughs> I'll just go explore by myself then. Mama, I'm in love with a criminal. <laughs> you, you know, I've actually seen like edits of Afmal to like that particular song, like like Armal specifically, because of course I have. <laughs> and so Afmal was never seen again. <laughs> when they say it's dangerous to go alone, they do mean it. <laughs> You know, I once learned something very wise from both from Camp Unasanus. Remember the buddy system. Athna has forgotten. <laughs> oh great, more fire. Okay, fine, his torch is not as bad. Hang on a minute, why is the spider in the game? Spiders have feelings, he can play too! Is that the qualifications for D&D, must have feelings? Uh, hi. I... I don't like spiders, usually. You know, Ubu probably doesn't understand that principle, so don't really version say that with roleplay, but okay. As long as you're not like an eight feet tall something, or, you know, I guess you're kind of cute. That is what I was expecting, and here it is. Doesn't even have the face anymore, like, that's a different spider face entirely. What was that? Where's that? Of course, I'm sorry. Of course, I'm Aaron sorry. wakes up to the sound of Afmo screaming. Okay, but also how? That has to have happened like a significant range away. Like, I'm pretty sure that human hearing does not extend that far in DND. I like, don't know. Can someone Maybe. help me out? 
maybe he's a maybe hmm. maybe it could depend on a number of factors like we don't know all of the stat all of the stats we just kind of have to assume based on how garbage act mouse flooding is <laughs> so maybe Aaron just has ungodly perception rules. It is either, also either that or the five senses are rolling. also either that or the five senses are also stats in this in this homebrew, and he just rolled a nat twenty first for hearing overall. Will be the first time that ever happens in my street because their hearing is notoriously terrible. Uh, uh, uh. What are you two blabbering on about? I just realized that they all have their, their, their same names. Except for, I think, Kawaii should give himself a slightly different name. You know, what's, you know what's weird, actually? Why did Kawaii-chan wake up after Eren? She's the one who actually has superior hearing to humans. Because because Aaron rolled a 20 in hearing. <laughs> Kawaii-chan heard a scream! Oh, I didn't hear anything. That's because your perception stat is like, what, negative two? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Or maybe you could just leave her to her spidery fate. Why would they do that? Again, they're not all gremlins. Only Zane. And possibly Aphmau. Well, speaking of being left to your spidery fate, no one came for those two. Like, if anything, <laughs> Aphmau is just chaotic stupid. This just looks like... This, look, this looks like Earl's dungeon. From that one time we actually saw what where Earl gathers his ingredients from. Well, hello there, sir. Welcome to my dungeon. <laughs> I, I hope people know what cooking with Earl is, otherwise it just sounds stupid right now. <laughs> as you all remember, I retired from my profession as a dungeon beast to become a forced chef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing by that reason you haven't heard of Cooking with Earl. I need to find no, your compilation. No, I have heard of Cooking with Earl. It's just... I now need that to... you've brought up a core memory, why? <laughs> <laughs> because that was one of my favorite things. <laughs> also because, like, that's, like, more or less the same voice that Ross did for Daniel as for Earl. It's just that Earl was amped up even more. Hello? My brother Dinkle has been going around feeding people poisonous potatoes. Sir, have Anybody? you had food from Bull? <laughs> I. I should have listened to Aaron. Or maybe you should just stop wandering off by yourself. That probably Novel concept, yes, I know. I was just looking for an excuse to be alone again. You were alone for, like, at the start of the session. Honestly, sometimes I enjoy being alone. <laughs> Who was just like, what about me? Do I not count? Still, such a weird choice to make the spider sound effects and just a dog. And also, like, a squeaky toy as well. Just don't say anything about it because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. As far back as I can remember, I've always ended up making friends. I've always wanted to make them happy. Look, it's fine. It's just called being an introvert. No one do it for you for that. It is kind, but does that make me a good friend? I'm sorry, is Ubu, like, <laughs> speaking for the skeleton? Is that what's going on right now? <laughs> or does Afmal think the skeleton is speaking in spider squeak language. <laughs> I don't know if that was... common. <laughs> I don't know if Afmar's even registering the squeaking is happening. But I mean, we keep cutting back to Uru, so I can only imagine she registers something. I feel like I don't say the right things anytime I or have the opportunity or That's because you keep rolling nat ones for flirting, of course you never say the right things. React or even just connect. We have time. garbage charisma. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Aside, side note: this this might also 
that also partly be like a metaphor like uh, uh, the reference to like the character of Aphma like in in like the real world in in, in sort of my in my street but it doesn't quite match up because most of the time Aphma does say the right things just no one listens to her because they're all crazy well unfortunately due to this being a video game inside of a fictional universe inside of a live stream that we are watching <laughs> there are like what eight walls 12 walls I mean, if, if everything has a, four, has a fourth war, then we're up to 16, I guess, but yeah. Sometimes you don't listen to others, and I just don't know why. I'm not trying to be... Uh, like, to which case, if this is an elaborate, elaborate metaphor within the 16 walls we are watching this in, that's actually a really great touch. Yeah, it, it might be that, you know, because like, again, like, a lot of times like, from what I've heard, like, D&D will bring out something that someone wants to, like, try to process in the real world so maybe this is the chance to do that the weird part is that it hasn't like been like built up in in many significant ways in fact the one time that afmal was you know basically alone for a lot of the time she was she was incredibly depressed and i guess the other time before that she was busy with trying to expand an entire franchise of maid cafes and just didn't register it at the time so it doesn't right. quite match up what we've seen so it's interesting that that's, that's what she's processing right now, but hasn't really been built up to any significant way in like 200 episodes. Like either that or it plays into her character backstory and she's role-playing right now. Yeah, that's probably more likely what it is. I just, yeah, there's a possibility it was meant in that way. Uh, depends on like how, depends on if, if we cut back to like the table where Aphmau is still looking down as well, like peers down as, and like says like, oh yeah, sure, you know, role playing, thank you for the compliments or something like that, then we'll know it's meant to be taken that way too. I feel like you guys are looking at it too much in an either or scenario. I, I feel like it could be both for the character like that, that Aphmau is playing and also the character of Aphmau. Yeah. Maybe I am nothing but a wench after all. Oh, okay. Emily, Emily's laptop. Okay. There's a certain way good people feel, and I want to be a good person. Is this a, that sounds like lawful good to me? Is it was like that was like the only way around it. It's nuanced. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the proper emotions or empathy to have. I don't really know why I'm telling both of you this. Okay, so she has registered the squeaking. But thanks for listening. You hear that? Hmm. <laughs> thanks, friend. Yeah, see that reaction. It implies that was for her too. Yeah. Well, I mean, she could all just just be good at acting. I mean, that is true. Yeah, because yeah. I, I will say, like, like, like whenever I'm, I'm voice acting, a lot of the time I like try to like adopt the same poses or the facial expressions naturally. But again, I, that that I, it's, it's more like the cinematography. It seems like it's not hitting the other characters. What's going on with Aphmau right now? And in universe, we've seen what her acting is like. It's not that good. <laughs> Remember Juliet? I mean, it's been a couple years since then. She yeah, could have gone better. Done any other acting since then? Until now. Oh yeah, sure. This is the upgrade. <laughs> this is the moment that it clicks in her brain. Of course. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I'll find a way out of this. My friends, my friends always have my back, even when I make things worse. And and I'm not going to just sit around and wait for that creature to come back. We've got to find a way out of here. <laughs> Okay, so when this video was called Confession from the Spider Prince, I was thinking the Spider Prince would show up a little bit before this, but okay. When did you get a crown? My game, my rules. <laughs> so what, you're some kind of spider prince now? That's literally my DM. So <laughs> I'm supposed to, like, uh, kiss you or something? <laughs> okay, okay, I, I get No, it's fine. Just, just, try, just try the Grim Fairy Tales version. Just throw it against a tree and have it transform. That's actually what happened, the frog prince. Get it! You're really serious? Like, serious? Serious? Super serious? And this will help. What?
Garth is like, just do it. Okay, we'd have to th <laughs> just took a drawn on mouth. Okay. Spiders don't have lips, by the way. <laughs> it's a forehead kiss. Sure hope it was, because Uru seemed to be like puckering up a mouth or something. What's going on? Wow, Athma was such a good kisser that the, the prince fainted on the spot. <sighs> You know, I reckon that's what would happen if Lawrence kissed her back in the day and finished Drop High. You know, remember, remember, didn't you know? I remember when, uh, when, when Lawrence asked Afmal as a joke to be his girlfriend, and she fainted on the spot. Yeah, probably how have how it gone. Shh. That's why I love having if Maya I here. If I said something crazy, that I was more of a. A Larmau Ooh. shipper than an Armau one? Is that what you're trying to no, say? No, than a Garmau shipper. That's not that crazy. Because, was this like was, war because I the shipped day. them before Armau was actually like a thing. As did most people, it seems. But also, Armau only became like, like one half. of my favorite ships because kids. Because, oh my god, kids are adorable. Yeah, that was basically so, it. It was like, oh my wait. god, kids are adorable. When you say because kids, do you mean like the episode where like Baby Lilith shows up in Phoenix Drop High, or like the mini game Babies with Aaron, or what are we basing this on? I or, like, mean, the time like they became MTV kids in like the Halloween got... special. I mean, like oh. I was attached to Aaron, but I wasn't attached to Armal, and then Afmal got pregnant, and then I became attached to Armal. So basically, um. So what you're saying is babies trap ships as well as people. Okay. Yes. That's an interesting take. That's an interesting takeaway from this conversation. All right. Listen, it's easy to trap a shipper. Just put fan fiction in the middle of a summoning circle. Yeah. No. Just, just, just like you know, two people. Eh. Not really vibing with it. One of them says, "Am pregante." Boom. Hey, hey, relax. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry to startle you, love. I was. I was gonna say, was that like actually Andy doing that again, like going back into Smooth Garth? But I don't actually know the answer to that. I was gonna laugh Wait. so hard if this was gonna just be um... the return of Smooth Garth. No, no, no. Um, why am I forgetting his name? It's the wife of Afma, wife of Afma, husband of Afma. <laughs> Jason. Jason. Yeah, I was. I was gonna <laughs> laugh so hard if this was gonna be just Jason that she ended up kissing. I mean, usually it always is. I know, that's what I was like, is, is, is like, how far would she go, really? Okay, but who's Afmau's wife? What? No one, that was a, that was a mistake, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, Gaelin, but now I guess, I'm thinking I about who would be Afmau's wife. Fine, her name is Jasonia, it's Jason's <laughs> Rule 63 persona. Okay, done, sorted, we're moving Rule on. Rule 60 Sona. Yes, or, or um, also, also, by the way, this is apparently uh, Mike the Matt is the person voicing the Spider Prince. Like, to which is case I say, to... is this Uwu's character? I guess, but I would assume that in reality, is this being voiced by Gareth as the DM? The curse was so long. It's good. No, to have no, my no, voice no. Back. It, what, what's what really was... happening is Uwu is whispering words into Gareth's ear, and <laughs> Gareth is, is translating. What happened is that um is that Lucinda put a spell on Uwu <laughs> just to prank everyone, and this is like the first time they're hearing Uwu speak, and they all go out, leave so running. Is. In which case, good job, my beloved. You came up with the best prank of all. <laughs> it's like hmm, I wasn't convinced by this at first, but since it's by Lucinda, of course, <laughs> it makes it so much better. So when Garth breaks walls and doors and windows and stuff, wait, no, he doesn't break windows. There's no, a problem. Right. When this guy breaks the door, there's no problem. Now that I think about it, speaking of Lucinda, this is actually the way that Afmal met Lucinda in MCD, right? They were both, like, imprisoned. I'm pretty sure. And then they had to, like, escape together. And I imagine, this... I, Aided by Lucinda's familiar, Bigglesworth. I think. It's, I've, well, I've watched MC in like a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's how they met. Like, to which case I say, this keeps happening. It does, yep. Yeah. You know, they keep getting away with this. 
Shall we then? Wait, wait, wait. Were you listening to all that? Yes. What do you, you literally thanked the Spider Prince for listening to you in the previous scene? Yes, he was listening. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. It's all right. Your inner turmoil is safe with me. Should I kiss that skeleton in case he's a hot prince too? <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> Could be a dead hot prince. <laughs> Or just I like this guy more than like, every other guy so far. Or maybe maybe the skeleton just like comes to life and it's like, Rang, thank you for inviting me. I was an undead prince. In life, I was the heir to the throne. <laughs> Fine. Well, Earl's got an ingredient still. That's also important. <clears throat> He's dead, I said. Just checking. You know, I'd like to say that this is the first time I've seen a YouTube video where someone makes out with a skeleton, but uh, I've watched Old Smosh, so no, it isn't. Oh, over my face. So how? Can we, like, see the how they got here, please? Like, we need to, like... <laughs> did they... I'm sorry, did Garth skip this whole part? I do remember that when, like, Aphma was doing her thing, like, like her monologue, that, that, like, the others seemed to be, like, doing something else in Tyler, like, talking amongst themselves or whatever. Which I thought was weird at the time, but also, like, did Gareth run two parts of the campaign simultaneously and had to listen to both of those things at once? In so which that, case, that is not uncommon. I'm calling shenanigans on that based on the fact that my street characters have such terrible hearing and attention skills that I don't think anyone can pull it off in-universe. I, I hate webs! I hate webs! So is this, like, is all the funny plant? from Harry Potter, did they, like, are we just gonna, like, imagine that they oh, just fell from the sky? I mean, if the, I mean, that would be the case if the seating was open, but it's not, I don't think. Oh, you're oh is there a hot. ceiling? Oh, sure! Rescuing mm. our closest friend from certain doom was definitely my fault. Boys, stop fighting! Kawaii Chan reached the floor, that impressive, I guess. If, I, and the, if they did fall, if not, oh, then I don't know how this happened. Trouble. How did Kawaii end up if if it didn't fall from the from the ceiling? How did Kawaii end up sitting down in web? What was the process behind like them getting stuck here? <laughs> was Earl just like, now please go ahead and sit down, and I'll bring you your food in a second. Allow me to encase you in web first of all. <laughs> it's traditionally my dungeon restaurant. Okay, but if they didn't fall, how did Zane end up floating? Now, sure, I've ran out of floor web, so you're gonna have to use the ones from this ceiling. Allow me to lift you up <laughs> into the air. <laughs> like, to which case I say, <laughs> Maya. Be, like, tall. <laughs> Maya, if uh, Zayn double classed into mage or whatever, I could totally feasibly see him flying up the mountain, but we don't know what level they are. I would love to see, like, Zane tries to levitate, like, fully concentrates, like, like you know, like, epic music is playing, you know, like, like, that, like the choir, <laughs> the one woman singing vowels is, like, is, like, doing a thing, and then suddenly, like, lifts up, and then, <laughs> just <laughs> see him stuck in web crazy a second thought, later. Crazy thought, crazy thought. What if yeah. one of them tried to cast a, like, spider finding spell, and it backfired, and then they got stuck in spider web? Does the does, does, does finding spells teleport you to a location in D and D? I actually know what was no, the... like they got into the cave. Oh, and then got lost in the cave. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, then, 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 then that finding spell is probably useless. You two are going to get me killed! Oh, so, well, what? I've, I'm sure the Zane would probably set the webs on fire if he could. Something's coming. Being quiet doesn't Here's help you. You're out in the open. Madam, I've got the ingredients. Prepare to be wined and dined, my palerinos. Is that the creature? Is it here for us? If it is, we'll deal with it. Eat them first! They're delicious! I'm a... Guys, you're here! No thanks to Zane. Or maybe yes, thanks to Zane if you cast that spell. Cure. But they're not 
Wait, they're is... not sick, okay. injured, they're duck. Like, Why is that a cure situation? A spider web a virus? Like, if we're, to which I say, yeah, I agree with you. Cure does not fix this situation. <laughs> Unless we are curing the air of spider web. I think I was, I, you know, I was wrong. I thought, you know, I, I required the, the assistance of, of D&D experts or people who have played a bit more than I have. But no, I don't need that because it doesn't make sense at all anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It didn't even clear out all the webs. It was like a radius or something. Of course. I mean. Except no, it would have been like cast behind. Never mind. I forget I said that. You're welcome. I know well, you sometimes the they have thing. conic sections or different shapes that spells take. I see. <laughs> what is? Is this a representation of what you just said? Oh, okay. Viruses. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, guys? I'm just imagining like like a child comes home from school and was like, Oh, so what did you draw today, little Timmy? A couple of viruses. Well, it's, uh, it's back to the therapist for you. <laughs> I am going to point out their neurons, for starters. <laughs> right. It's because I said this and then you showed them, so I thought that was a connection. But okay. No, I was saying because you said that you got this covered without the D and D players, so I was like, I think we've got potential, as in you've got potential. Oh, I see. Okay, you would bestow me with extra neurons, and I was—I didn't have enough <laughs> of them to be aware that I was—I was being bestowed them. So, isn't that isn't that good? Okay. <laughs> Shall we run? Okay, so I guess they could have fallen from like that part of the ceiling, like in a curve, and then so I guess they had like a brabble or something. Yes, let's. That's a giant spider on the ceiling. I thought. Yeah, it was in like it was in like a, like a cubby hole or something. So I guess it must have been there. You know. Mm. Oh come on! You're a D and D party. You're supposed to fight the thing. I in turn-based cuts. See, Aaron gets it. Watch. No, you don't have to fight them. No. Okay. No, you, 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 can, you, can, you can use the handling and tame it instead like we did. Or just run. Or cast one axe throw and apparently do like 100 damage, I guess. Or just think it. Like, stop Thank being so morons and roll for initiative. <laughs> No, I, I think they had the right idea. Simply exit. Hmm. But wasn't the spider what they were here to vanquish? They were they were there to like vanquish like monsters of some kind, so potentially, yes. Oh wait, no, because the wanted poster, yeah, it was that. Yeah, you're right. They just failed their mission. Aaron, I really appreciate you saving me like that. Thank you guys. All of you for coming to help me. You mean you helping us? That's, that's not what happened. Thank us. Just thank you all for your help. And I mean that genuinely. My pleasure. Thank you for that kiss. What? That's why you pay attention and don't do too fast the campaign on time, Aaron. I hope you've learned something today. <laughs> Great. Now we're stuck with a useless prince, no money, and a jealous Aaron. <sighs> prince Boy. usually has money. Yeah, I would say somewhere, part in, like whatever kingdom. Yeah, that, that's, that can give you a sense of direction. Burn somewhere else to go. Village from before. And that is our cue to leave. Go the prince is like, wait, it what? Did you say burn a village? Can we roll back that second? No, <laughs> off on another adventure, are we? Yep, that's the plan. Might I offer a proposition then? You can keep your propositions 50 feet away from her. Thanks. Yeah, no, Aaron. Remember, this is get into character, as Gareth said that one time. You're not can dating in this universe. Right, the fact that Zane said Aaron as well, can we just appreciate that the implication here is this is a real scuffle happening between the players in that Aaron is getting jealous from a spider? Yes, from an NPC spider. Well, no, the spider's still there at the table. This is a real spider. Yes, the spider was killing on Gareth's head. 
Uh, okay. He's so. getting jealous of a legitimate, just big old spider. Uh, okay. Are you okay, Sir Aaron? I mean, <laughs> not that I'm interested or anything. I come from a land far away. Great, so we have an emo knight and a sundere warrior. What a combination. Also, Kawaii Chan has not done her, like, accent at once in this entire episode. I missed the- <laughs> That was a nice addition, because she's the only one actually doing a character voice. A land full of treasure and adventure. Sights and sounds not experienced in places such as this. With and we'll never get to see it because Afbao got bored. The four of you accompany me back to my home. I promise you, it will be beyond your wildest imaginations. If this is just the campaign pitch. I mean, potentially. They've only done like a couple of sessions. I can see that being the campaign pitch. Uh, let's see. What? We can't stop there. Sure we can. It's the dungeon master's bedtime. But things What? <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's light outside. What do you mean it's your bedtime? We're just getting excited. He's nocturnal. I, well, I mean, Lucinda's nocturnal. Is it Ubu's bedtime? Next time. Next time. Until then, my dear travelers. Oh, he went really raspy there for some reason. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to do a Levi drink earlier, so drink for Gareth, uh, leaving these audience wanting more. Good showmanship. The excuse was still terrible, but you know. Who knew Gareth was the greatest showman all along? <laughs> Shut up, can... ghosty. You know, I this can is see a it. Dumb pun. I hate you. I can see it, especially considering that considering that Andy and Keston both did a cover of to, of the other side together at one point on Keston Channel. So, wait, what? <laughs> it's a pretty, it, it is a pretty good cover, I will say. It's a pretty decent cover. That's like the only version of the story I've like heard all the way through because I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> the Whoa, hold up, good. backtrack. You've never seen the movie. I was actually we, we were I was going to at one point for my birthday, but it was sold out. So watch Black Panther instead. <laughs> Mm, actually, I Black Panther. Black Panther's pretty good too. But... I yeah. <laughs> it Wait. was, but I, I was I'm I'm always going to be uh, curious about what happened if uh, in the in the alternative universe where we actually did get to see it and there were enough tickets. The other side, dare I say? I'm gonna kick him. <laughs> <laughs> He does a lot of songs. I'm struggling to find this. The, just search it up on his channel. That's a that's a click I the magnifying glass. Channel. No, click the magnifying glass on this channel page yeah. and type in side or something like Dude, that. Dude, this is so convoluted. Just look up the other side cover by Keston Howard. I did it look might up come the up the other side, and I ended up with friends on the other side from a lat. No, not okay, a lat. Okay, look, uh, it might. Anna. Yeah, it, okay, uh, it might, it might come up. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> give me a second. All right, so... Here, I just typed in the, the other side, Kesson, and it is the very first result. Come on, guys. It, it's a say, bar. I was going to say it might have come as Lucario's claw, but yeah. Same oh my life. god, wait. I have definitely seen this cover picture, and I don't remember hearing this ever. How did I... <clears throat> I've literally seen the cover up before, but I never actually watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I, I don't know what to say about that. All right. Uh, so, the video. Uh, I think Maya's listening to it currently because I can see the bobbing. So, we'll not get any final thoughts from her. Everyone else. Uh, <laughs> As D and D players, how does this stack up in your minds? If we got any stats at cool. all, D &D. that would make oh. all of this better for me. Zane's perception is. Uh, I would have two. loved That's to see. Know. Like I would have loved to see their stat blocks, but because we don't. I don't know, it just seems kind of fuzzy around the outlines. Not to mm. mention, uh, it is a homebrew, which means Garth put together the classes, 
which probably means they're inherently broken in the okay, first no. place. And you might not have. Yeah. You never know. They might have done a little bit of a search on the good old D and D Beyond. You know, it's, it's Gareth. <laughs> well, yeah, but the players could have done a search on D and D Beyond. It's I feel like then I don't is... think any of them would have done a search on D and D Beyond, except maybe Zen if he got like really into it, but he never would admit it. The only reason I feel like this isn't like amazing is because it very much just feels like. Oh my God! No, Norris I should totally see if Emo Knight is on D and D Beyond. Wait, did someone hold on a second? No, wait, totally... what? It didn't. It, it didn't occur to me until just now. Wait a second. Oh my God! Wait, did someone remake it? Maybe. Hold on. I I so want to see if someone has their own version. Wait. Uh, Wait, where what? where is it? Where is it? What are you What are you talking about? Of the, the version of what this campaign? No, of of the of the emo night. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, is it my homebrew collection? No, that's no. Oh wait, here it is, homebrew. Okay. Uh, class, 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 class. That's subclass. Um. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Seems, Sure. Okay. Uh, emo night. Please. Dang it! <laughs> no. Well, that I guess that's uh, so much better than Andy. It's it's almost like one of them has a one of them has a channel dedicated to entirely with song covers, and one doesn't. Okay. Okay. But like, I didn't think. Oh, actually, no. Speaking of covers, Maya, did you? Did you you know the in uh, hottest girl on the block. You know, like a couple of side stories before this, the beauty competition. Remember when Caitlyn sings "Faster Car" for us for a bit? Wait, wait, wait. Um, I think I do. Okay, well, that's an actual cover on on the uh, Princess Rizu channel. I have seen that one though. Yeah, I just ju just I checking because I, I don't I remember seeing it in an video. Now. I remember seeing the video though. I don't remember it actually being in an Ask Now video though. Uh well, yeah, it was just a, a chance because they needed they needed some talent for Caitlyn to to use in that moment, and I guess I, I guess okay, theater they, stuff in the moment. Didn't they also apply. do like karaoke night? Uh, they did. Like but... I feel like they had. Some sort oh, of not like, a, like... Not like it's like an actual episode, but like they did like in, like mini games and sing competitions yeah. with each other. But I do, but that was that was done live. That was that was done oh. with like yeah, yeah. I never like, watched Aphmau live. I, I tell you what, fun fact. Actually, um, arguably Aphmau's uh, greatest boost or greatest like collab networking thing that happened was actually uh, was actually when. Uh, when she was invited to take part in a singing competition on on the channel of they who must not be named um and uh that was that that was that was where she met like a lot of the people who then became integral part of uh of catface is they who should not be named a channel or is that a cover-up for somebody's actual name it's oh, guys everything that was that was okay I, I had a feeling, but I googled it to see if it was an actual it's okay. channel. I don't, I it's okay. I don't think you could find Sky anymore anyways. I think his channel... Didn't he sell his channel? He sold I all uh, of the channels that he owned, which included... Jose, like, sorry. Day? Yeah, like, I'm okay. trying, yeah, I'm trying to remember... Okay. I'm trying to remember because, like, I remember that the original plan in 2017 was to make it, like, the, the Sky does Minecraft channel, as it was still referred to back then. Oh, a no, community channel that never that never became a thing. Then Net Nobody happened. Then Sky Does Minecraft became Sky Does Everything. And then afterwards, um, afterwards, I, I pieced it out anyway before like like all the controversy emerged. So by that point, I was like, well, I'm not getting back into this now because what's what's, what's the point? Why would I, why on earth would I do that? I will find a Cooking with L compilation to show you after uh, off camera, but obviously not from the actual channel. Yeah, I, I did just go and check. He there. It, it looks like there is a big gap here. There was two years ago best Minecraft data packs of 2021, 1. 17. and I then as of actually. 13 days ago, there was where have you been? There oh, was wow. a there was a yeah there was a gap between those two videos. Oh, because that that's interesting. Cause I, that's I think that data packs one is like actually the last Sky video I I saw, and then like I imagine like. Because that's what about the time I found out about 
I, I found out about the controversy like wet, like soon after that. So I then just never visited the channel ever again. Yeah, they only to realize the wow, there's like for a while. Oh well, d okay. Yeah, they they did that 2021 video, and then as of 13 days ago, they started uploading again. I see. I mean, quite honestly, I wish you were right. right. I wish that they Wait, had sold the channel because I was like, I videos again without doing supporting them. But anyway, I guess not. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about like Sky? I literally said Sky does everything, wasn't and Sky does. I can't does... believe that they would start uploading again. Mm. I mean, neither can I, but not for the same reason. I'm you in a can't, little I bit imagine. of shock. Sorry. Ah. Okay. Well, yes, that was Aftmal's like biggest networking collab, and then I remember from, and then actually. There was a video that uh, that's the entire Sky Media team, not the entire Sky Media team, like the the five the five main people did in honor of Afmal specifically. And I was like, well, I gotta check out the channel now. And that's when I and that was around the time that like the Summer Party side stories thing came out. And then soon afterwards, I started as I came back later and I started watching like the other stuff, like Phoenix Drop High, which then got me to my street. And here we are. So. Yeah, very instrumental. And in fact, actually, there's even more of a connection to this episode because because arguably like the my street like franchise overall you know like the earth prime of minecraft roleplays as i said before uh, was started out sort of with minecraft diaries origins which of course the first episode of that was the spider queen so we've gone from a spider oh, queen kickstarting like everything kind of to spider Pri well the spider queen episode wasn't that bad i mean it wasn't I, like... with spiders. I see but this was fine for you <laughs> I was, I refused to play vanilla Minecraft because I was scared of Minecraft spiders. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I skipped over the first few episodes of Origins and anything else that had spider in the title. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was like three of those, but. No, yeah, there were, because it came me. back to work. I'm pretty sure there was one at the beginning, and then the next one was also, and then I'm pretty sure there Spider became Spider came back towards the end of Origins. Hmm. I don't remember the coming back part, but then again, D and D also came back. Maybe it's like it it all it all connects. You know, it it all it all fits in this one episode. Uh, I guess <laughs> in a weird sort of way that almost has nothing to do with that because the Spider Prince comes in right at the end. In fact, I'd say that that the, the title would have been way more accurate. If it if you just change one si one single word from it, instead of confessions from the Spider Prince, it should have been confessions to the Spider Prince because Aphmau's the one doing all the confessing. The Spider Prince confessed to nothing at all. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So that's something. Also, I would love to know more about this the Spider Prince. Quite honestly. <laughs> oh no, it'd be so cool because she's like a mage. You could have done like like solemn incantations. Yeah, can we can we just like can we, can we put this like on a list of um of, of like <laughs> of of e eventual eventual Aphmau fan shows that we actually do just the rest <laughs> of this campaign? Yeah, why not? Been... I you know sure. I feel like it's just difficult because this isn't exactly structured like D and D per se. No, but that's that could be one of the fixes. Okay, because I'm like I don't know how we would go about continuing this without their like, like essentially all we got is Aphmau's got really low charisma. Aaron is obnoxiously strong. Wait, I've got an idea. I've got an idea actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> BB, if you ever want to like arrange another D and D campaign, then then. Just, you know, we can have, like, you as Gareth, then we can, like, invite KW as Kawaii chan get one of these two to play half now. I don't oh, know, God. Aiden as Aaron or something. And then we, <laughs> and then we just role play, like, we, we pretend like, like we're in character, but also, but also portraying the other characters, like another layer. We're adding another layer to the, the fourth walls. Uh, of course. <laughs> we're adding an, we're adding... 16. Yeah, people seem to like the uh, what, like whenever we do like videos in can in character as Aphmau characters. So why not? I don't know that if I can do a Garth well. impression though. I don't know. We need someone with like dungeon mastering experience. That's why I thought of that. But uh, 
I haven't I mean, been a dungeon master before, though. However, I, I have been a dungeon master before. It doesn't. Before. Rip in the Dark runs on a whole other system. Right. Okay. Well, this will be first time for everything. <laughs> I have been a dungeon master before, so we can gender bend God. We could. Yeah, well, we I, totally it would have been gender bend anyways. Hey. Oh my God. Yeah, that, can I be gender bend Aaron? Yep. What? <laughs> We can double <laughs> gender bend. <laughs> then what? Then what? We hiding as Afmal? Yes. <laughs> it is dramatic enough. Oh wait. So then. Oh wait. Hold on. So who are we gonna find for Aiden's hubby? What? Maya, gender bent Aaron. Oh. Yeah, but I feel like it'd be fun. I feel like it'd be a fun little gift if we just gave Aiden a man. Finally, he's been searching for a long time. Okay. Uh, what about, I mean, oh the spider prince. <laughs> there we oh go. You, God. you like, casually totally roasting that. Aiden? I I'm not... totally ship that. I, d I don't think you've been like around BB when she talks about Aiden, because this happens a lot. It does not happen that often. You literally, on the, on the Butterfuss, on the Buttercore wiki page, you wrote his description as the laughing stock of the company, but wait, still a very wait, wait. serious and important member. Which is true. He's always the butt <laughs> of the joke. It's yeah. not, I mean, like as as an objective fact. So he's it's always, anytime he's there, he's always it happens frequently. That's what I mean. <laughs> sure. Okay, wait, wait, wait. But, like, Let's backtrack um... a tiny bit. <laughs> yes. Would Jacob be Kawaii Chan? No, I. No, see, the, the thing is that with the, the Atmos stuff, like, KW, KW and I always voice Zane and Kawaii, and it's like what we do now, so I, I, yeah, I keep so we gotta switch it up, so KW's no. gotta be, KW has to voice Zane. Right, that's good. Jacob, get over here, put on the cat go oh, play, no. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Dude, oh, Fuse. I don't... I, from me. I vaguely <laughs> recall us trying to get Jacob into a maid dress at one point. Oh yeah, that was Shorty's yep, idea. Yep. Now we can finally do it. I didn't mean oh to cosplay as the characters as well, because that's going to be more difficult. And also the only oh my God, I'm no, so down for we that. can get you in a cat girl outfit. The only character whose clothing I have is Zane's. Well, you need Great. to become you cat gotta... girl now. Yeah. I mean... I, okay, fine. You, you, you know what? I can just I could just find like I could just find like a long haired wig, have the Zane hoodie, and then just still do the voice. No, no, <laughs> wait, no. We need the we need Uber cat like stereotype cat girl. Kawaii Chan yeah. cat girl. She is stereotype cat cat girl, I guess, isn't she? Pretty much, yeah. She'd like it, it's literally the persona, yeah. I think I'm the only one with an easy job because I just have to mimic Afmel from season one finale of my street. Yeah, I, I also want to like I also want to to, to see like KW as as Kawhi Chan, this would be would be good as well because not only has she got the voice down, but also Kawhi Chan's character voice being like a British accent. I wanna see how KW pulls that one off. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> This might seem like me trying to like wheeze out of it, but you know, I know, I know the audience. <laughs> yeah, the audience wants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I okay. think what the audience so wants is you in a cat girl outfit. Still get Jacob in a cat outfit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I think cat girl outfit is a higher need than than someone else who's not British doing a British accent. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, you know what, you know what, anyone who's actually still on at this point, put in the uh, put in the comments if you want like the cat girl or you want uh. British Kawaii Chan slash KW. Both, both. Wait, but then that both. means that I'm not playing Kawaii Chan. I'm just playing Zane as a cat girl. What's the difference? No, no, no. <laughs> you play Zane, Zane but you a get cat a girl. side thing, like completely separate thing of you acting as Kawaii Chan for something else. So that can be a separate video then. Yeah, it doesn't need but to be part of the campaign. In a, in, a, in a cat girl made outfit. <laughs> Wait, whatever okay. gets you in a cat girl outfit, man. I don't care about the specifics. BB gets it. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter where necessarily. I think it'll add to the authenticity if it's in the D and D one, admittedly, but yeah. But if it if that's if that's not how we're gonna do it, I'm perfectly cool with that as long as. <laughs> 
as long as we get Jacob in a cat girl outfit. Watch it with watch watch my like super chats just go through the roof every time like, the cat girl thing. <laughs> oh yeah, the infinite money glitch. You know, <laughs> the, that that is that is what what many women on Twitch have found out. What, which is simply simply exist and you get money. Yep. That uh, okay. All right then. Okay. I have to go because I have a meeting at four. Mm. Okay. So the... bye. Oh my. Yeah. The the the. I also have oh. a meeting pretty soon at four. Okay. I don't have a meeting, but I do have a stream at five, so I will <laughs> probably go and beta. I was going to show you all cooking with Earl. Missed out the chance to do that. Dang it. Okay. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, to which case, uh, depending on if I get out of that meeting in time, Jacob, I might be able to join you for the live stream because I'm interested in seeing the pops being revived. Oh, oh for the, okay. That too. That is important as well. That's exactly what the live stream is. Like, as much as I dog on the pops, I actually quite like the concept. Yeah, that's why I like try to... <laughs> I tried to like wedge myself into that franchise several times, but I just never, I just never give, separate enough time to actually develop a story. But hey, gotta support the ones that are actually there and always review them. So yeah, absolutely. I do enjoy reviewing the pop stuff most of the time, except for when they hurt my brain, which is which is frequently, but not all the time. Yeah, like that's most of the time. Depends. Actually, depends on always. depends on the creator. <laughs> Some of the, a lot of them, it's fifty fifty. Not... Also, BB, before I leave, I wanted to tell you something important. Yeah. Ahmed needs to have a crisis on infinite. She Earths. tried doing that with Void that Paradox, be... and then she didn't do season two like she promised she would. Well, there's a crisis right there. God, she baby. said, "Hey guys, if you guys like it, do this amount of likes, and I'll do season two. And guess what? You got that amount of likes." I don't know. Void Paradox like combined two things. That's an infinite Earth, like you know. It could have been right? no, no. It would have three things. Okay. Mod Mod World, the store, and MCD. But that's besides the point. It could have done so many more C things had they done season two. Yeah, I, I, I want to see, like, Meteora Valley in there. Meteora Valley was a fun little experiment. I wish you did more Choose Your Own Adventure stuff. Actually, hold on a second. Wait, Sassy Lawyer Chronicles. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. I just, like, just that version of Aphmau and Ross realizing they're part of, like, an extended universe. I would love to hear about that. I like the, Matt, I like the idea for, like, a gag that you just get, like, one scene of like sassy Laurel lawyer chronicles Aphmau trying to do a case against God to try and not insert her into the show in a in a big way. She's like, Your Honor, my series is not fit for this kind of toe. Yeah, and then and then Ross comes in speaking on behalf of God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Why not? Yes. Yeah, Your so Honor. Yeah, so that, there's there's loads of things that can uh that, that can come back for sure within Void Paradox, oh. yeah. well theoretically anyway. You know, not like anyone who's still watching her channel is old enough to know any of it anymore. But you know, oh yeah, I'm sure people was like telling me Meteor Valley. Like, why does that sound like vaguely familiar? But other people are like, what on earth is that? Yeah, look up Meteor Valley on Aphmau's channel. They're like, That's whoa, Aphmau did role plays. I mean, most of the people who watch my stream five years later know that Afmal did, in fact, do role plays. If he I... says like the casual everyday Afmal fan of nowadays, then that would th that would be the reaction. I agree. Yeah. But for this audience, probably not. <laughs> I mean, I, I, not, not, I I do notice that some people will start watching these like halfway through. Like th there, there's always like new new people in the chat sometimes, but most of them. Are either from the old Aphmau roleplay era, or that I have like a vague understanding of at least my street, so... <laughs> they know that Aphmau did roleplays. But oh well, that's enough of Aphmau's roleplays for right now. Wasn't too much of a final thoughts in this case, but... Uh, oh well, next time is season 6, and don't worry, we'll all have plenty of thoughts yeah. about all of that stuff anyway, so... You're not missing out too much. It was, it was an okay episode. 
wasn't as egregious as the last ones. I will say the last ones had a, had a little bit more non D and D stuff. I was gonna say for the last ones you're referring to the last D and D episode, not the last side stories episodes. Yeah, right. Because the last side stories episode was atrocious. <laughs> So, yeah, but I guess we're done with both weird. of those things now. With D&D and with side stories, it was a nice we, side project. That why, could have why did they do this third D&D episode? Like, I don't... Because the question, they, isn't, the question isn't why, it's why not. They set well, up the, it was like a new campaign or something. They wanted to bring it back. By all means, they could have done several more of these. And I wish but they, they didn't, though. A campaign pitch. But they didn't, is the thing... Yes, yeah, so the question then becomes why didn't they continue? Not why did they no, continue? No, but, but in this episode one time. two, they made it a pretty good conclusion in general. It was like, all right, sure. For for episode three, it feels like it's trying to tell you that there's going to be more, and there yeah, just isn't. Speech at the end does agree. Yeah, it does seem to does seem to imply that. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, we'll never know. Okay, let's uh. Well, like most D and D campaigns, it went on a long hiatus. Of course. <laughs> Rip in the dark coming this year. Okay, all right. See if you want to so yeah, leave a like or dislike as you're being to subscribe to us already, or follow if you're on Twitch. And on that note, until next time, farewell. We'll farewell. see you same time, same place, five years later. Not my outro. Dang it. <laughs>